If you've been thinking about making the move to Central Florida for some time, or maybe you're actually in the process of packing up the car because you're about to make that move, I'm going to give you the nine things you need to know before you move to Central Florida or in the Orlando area. Let's get into it. First, and probably most important, the cost of living in Central Florida is far less than the national average. It's actually 2% less at the last time of recording, and that means more money in your pocket. How does Florida make their money, though? They've got to have a way. It's the sales tax. Sales tax in Florida is 6% and goes a little higher depending on the county that you're in. This is to help tremendously as you're thinking about what you want to do when you're in Florida, things you want to go experience. And of course, that's again how the state makes their money, you paying for things. But that gives you the opportunity to choose what you want to pay to do. Second thing you want to be well aware of if you're thinking about moving to Central Florida, the drivers and the traffic can be extreme at times. It happens in probably every place around the country, but sometimes you get some of those drivers who maybe just learned differently than the rest of us, perhaps, let's say that. And if that you run into that situation in Florida, it's best just to kind of move over and you know things just happen ahead of you, and that's fine. But sometimes in Florida, people will bring in different driving habits than what you're used to, and they'll be driving a little faster in one lane, slower in another lane, and uh, it can make for some unique driving. In addition, the traffic can be, on I-4 especially, abysmal. I mean, truly bad. I have been stuck on I-4 multiple times. If at all possible, try and avoid I-4. I know that there's constant construction going on to try and widen things and make things easier. But if you can avoid I-4 for your commuting and you're trying to think about places to go, like to live, and you're thinking about, okay, my work's here and home's here, let's try and avoid I-4. That's going to save you a bunch of time. The third thing you definitely want to think about when you're moving to Central Florida is the weather. I know what you're thinking. Michael, are you talking about the crazy heat in August, or are you talking about this super intense hurricanes during hurricane season? Well, um, yeah, both. Yeah, I'm talking about both. That does happen in Florida. You are going to get both hurricanes and very intense heat. Now, when I first moved to Florida, I was thinking to myself, oh, I can handle it. I I've been to Florida in August and September. I can totally handle this. No, 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 no. You, you have to be mentally ready. You have to think about how you're going to change your daily habits, like how much water you're going to drink every day, because that humidity that you feel, it's not just going right into your skin. You're actually getting dehydrated with the heat and the sun and, and the humidity. So it's something to think about. Make sure that you are you know, kind of thinking about that in advance of the move, the weather. In addition, think about those hurricanes, because we don't get you know earthquakes like they do in California. We get hurricanes here in Central Florida. Luckily, unless you're right on the coast, you're not going to see a lot of the um, the storm surge effects from the hurricane, but it is likely that you're still going to experience a couple of them in central Florida and some of the really intense damage that they can cause. Super winds, intense rain, it's uh, it's a lot. So be aware of that. Number four on the list is the job market. Now, from time to time, and this happens just being on planet Earth, the market's gonna go up and down. That's just how it works. The job market, the housing market, the economy, totally makes sense. We know about this. We've been here before. We've been on this ride before, but when it comes to Florida, you Central Florida anyway, you can find quite a few jobs. Of course, there are many in the theme park, but it's not just the parks. There's entertainment, there's golf, there's so many other things that people are doing that there are jobs behind. So there are quite a few jobs in Central Florida. Maybe not every single job is perfect for every individual, but there's more than likely a couple of them that are gonna be a great fit for you. So it's something to think about as you're considering that move to Central Florida. Number five is transportation. Now, a lot of people who live in cities, Central cities, like to take public transportation from buses and metros. And if you live in Orlando proper, like the actual city, they do have buses there, no question. You can, you can take public transport around. But if you're thinking about taking public transportation outside the city, for further away, like closer to the theme parks or even further away, you probably are going to want your own car. Do they have buses? Yes, they do. But more than likely, you're going to want to use your own car because the bus system is, it's good. It's not a bad system. It's just one that sometimes is difficult to reach the further away areas, right? So if you have your own car, it's going to make a big difference when it comes to living further away from Orlando proper. Number six on our list, watch out for that wildlife. And you're saying to yourself, Michael, wildlife, I know, you know, we're talking about central Florida here, right? Not, we're not south in the Everglades and all that with the big, you know, 10 foot gators. No, central Central Florida does have alligators. We do have seen them on the roads. They, they exist. They're at the golf courses. They're everywhere. But that being said, there are other things that are, you know, a little dangerous in Central Florida. Snakes, spiders, things that are poisonous. You know, that's really bad. Now, when you're an adult and you're walking around, you're vigilant. You're looking where you're going. Usually, I would definitely recommend that. 
Uh, a couple things not to do, just head on into the forest and go camping under the stars. Don't do that. Some people like to do it. Uh, some people have done it. I've done it uh, in Boy Scout days, but I, um, I don't recommend it in Central Florida at all. Definitely don't want to be doing that. A lot of things that are poisonous out there. Second point and the reason why I'm bringing it up, if you have small dogs or kids, you need to be extra cautious in your bodies of water and just general outside play. Playing outside is really important and fun. And in Florida, you can do it quite a bit because we've got good weather. Sometimes it's a little hot though, but you know, watch out for that. But you definitely want to make sure that snakes, alligators, and spiders are you know, far away from any kids. That's really important. And dogs, it's unfortunate. I'm going to use one example story. You hear about it, just local news, where if somebody had their small dog and it was too close to a body of water and they are just, you know, the gators are hidden in there and they can just pop out at a moment's notice. So really, that's just something to be cautious of. If you're not from this area, you might not be thinking about that. I recommend just doing a little bit of research about alligators. I went to Gatorland. I, I really enjoyed going and I learned a ton. I learned a lot about what gators kind of commonly do, what makes them really mad, when they're gonna be most active. Things like that are really good to know. Gotta be careful, Every the rule of thumb, every body of water in Florida, no matter how big or small, has either snakes, gators, or both. Tip number seven, get ready for some spectacular food. One of the positive things about Central Florida is so many different food options. It's not just like standard, like, all right, here's this food and Americana food. You get something from everywhere. Really authentic food places all around Central Florida. It's got a really good foodie scene, especially closer to the city too. You'll find flavors from all across the world, not just the United States, all over the place. And from what I have been told, super authentic. So if you're looking for an amazing foodie scene and you're a big foodie and you know you'll be a foodie for life, this um, this is an opportunity for you, for sure. Number eight, and one of my favorites on the list, is the unexpected hospitality. When I walk around in Central Florida, I always feel super at home. Now, it's not just because I've been here for a while, but it's because everyone that I meet, or at least a vast majority of people that I meet are super friendly, want to say hi. And when I invite friends and family to, you know, kind of see the area, I walk them around, and they are outside the parks. Parks are great too, but if they're outside the parks, just walking like the grocery store, just as an example, and just walking kind of into the grocery store, they'll see somebody and they say, oh, hey, how you doing? Or they'll say, you know, someone will walk by and say, oh yeah, please, you know, after you or something like that. A lot of courtesy, a lot of friendliness. It's something that takes people who are not from the area a bit off guard from time to time. So, I mean, it's not in a bad way. They're just like, oh, oh, shocking. Like, that's super nice. So this is something to, you know, be excited about, be happy about. It might not happen like, everywhere you go, but you'll see it quite a bit, especially if you're coming from a not Southern state where they don't have as much of that. For me, it was a bit of a shock. You know, people that I didn't know were just saying, oh, have, have a great day just on the sidewalk as you're walking around your neighborhood. I'm not messing around. Like people would just be like, hey, how you doing? I was like, I don't know you, but I love this interaction. So if you're coming from a Northern state, that will be a bit of a culture shock. It's a great shock though. It's something that makes you feel happy and then you end up doing it. I, I do, I do it all the time. I'm, I've turned into that. It's not a bad thing, it's a positive thing. Number nine on the list, and this is a lot of fun too, get ready for some exciting entertainment. Now when I say entertainment, I'm talking about the theme parks of course, but there's other things to do in the area and when friends and family again visit from elsewhere, I'm reminded that there's so many things to do, you end up just off the couch and doing stuff constantly. This is a really good thing, but can take a little while to get used to. You end up saying to yourself, oh, I guess we should just rent a movie tonight, right? That happens, sure, always happens, it's good. Renting movies is good. But it also happens where you just kind of go out and want to go out all the time. And the weather does kind of play a role in that. If it's extremely hot, you end up inside a lot more. But if it's really nice outside, you end up uh, out and about quite a bit because there's so much to do. I sure hope you found this one helpful and informative if you're thinking about making the move to Central Florida. Special thanks to our patrons for making all of our videos possible and thanks to you for being a part of it with me. Until next time, have a magical day.